we were going through the store and I saw this bowl just for a dollar. It's a fruit basket. And um, I just looked at that and I said it looked like a Tiffany light. And I thought, why not? Why not make a Tiffany light out of this? We have a photo shoot coming up called the Curiosity Shop. Um, that's a pretty big bowl. I wish I had a bigger one, but I'm going to make a, a base on this, and um, this is going to be awesome. So let's make a Tiffany light today. Tonight uh, we're mixing up a mixture of a uh, silver acrylic 995. Uh, this is an Alpha brand. I'm also using an Alpha 999 black. And we want to do equal parts, and I'm going to just move our black into our silver uh, to create the proper color that's going to look like a lead material for stained glass. If you ever looked at stained glass windows, there's leading uh, they use around the windows to put the stained glass in there. And Tiffany lights were made of that. They were made of a, um, a molded soft lead. They were baked or something. And, um, but using stained glass materials, I think we nailed it right a little bit more silver. Maybe get that in there. There, that's a nice, really, really nice metallic black. And we're going to paint this so well. And it's going to be a little bit tricky because we've got a lot of space here that are negative, we call negative spacing. And uh, you could actually, if you really wanted to, if you could find uh, a uh, a nice spray paint that was kind of a leading color. I would highly recommend just spraying this. It would be a lot faster than what I'm doing here, but uh, I have such interesting taste when it comes to making stuff. So first thing we want to do is we want to, this won't take very long, I can just run the brush over. It's this nice soft brush here. And we're going to just run it over and we're going to lead up the whole entire surface of this. Okay, and I got my mask on because I'm working with floral foam today. I'm using a, a new blade, I'm using a new blade, and I'm sculpting out the shape of a light. So basically, I'm going to try now to sculpt out a light with the same shape as carefully now sculpting away pieces. I want to have a small button and then a larger round piece and then to taper down and then have a base. So let's see what this is going to look like after I sculpt it out. Whenever you're working with floral foam, wear a mask. So what I'm doing right now, as you can just see, it hasn't taken me very long, about 15 minutes, to just very, very easily sculpt. I'm just using a plastic tool for clay and I'm very easily just shaping it up. So we're going to make this smaller. I like this large orb in the middle. See how far as we got right there. Not bad. I'm going to shape this and make it more like that. More down. Now on our light cover I wanted to put some dragonflies going this way. So I used my hot glue gun, a piece of wax paper, I drew out a pattern of a dragonfly and you just take your hot glue gun and trace over it and once you get it traced over, leave it on there for about 15 minutes to cure, you can peel off a perfect dragonfly like this and then you can just apply it to your light. Very very easy to do that. Now, I remember I have to make now one, two, three, I think about six of them. Yeah, one, two, three, about six of them. And uh, I want them to hang a little bit more down than it should be. So that's practically okay, So once you get your dragonflies done up, I'm using a silver 995 alpha acrylic and just a touch of alpha 999 black. I'm going to mix this together just a touch. We want the silver to be more prominent than the, the black, not like the uh, light shade that we had done.
we want to paint our dragonflies, make them look like they're made of iron. And if you need to, you can put on a second coat. I'm going to run this under the hair dryer and uh, see what it looks like. Okay, so once you get all your dragonflies in place, you can have two options. You can use a white glue, you can glue them down that way, or you can use a hot glue. You can put hot glue on the back of this. T today I'm going to use the white glue because uh, it's just easier to brush on and stick it on there. And then once they dry, we're going to cut that out there. What we're going to do is we're going to create the stained glass illusion that it has in the Tiffany lights. Get all your dragonflies glued down and basically they're glued. So you can see the glue is drying over here. Um, we're going to paint the back of these with a glue and food coloring mixture to create artificial stained glass. So let these dry completely and then cut them out. Okay, to create artificial stained glass you're going to need a white glue, white one that dries very clearly, and you're going to need a bit of food coloring. You just put a drop of food coloring right in there, and you're going to blend, it's like kind of like an eyeball at the moment, you're going to blend them together, and what this is, is the beginning of artificial stained glass. Now I think, uh, I think I can make it a little bit darker than that. I can make it a little bit darker. Um, it dries it dries a shade and a half darker than it is right now. So when the, the molecules condense, it, it becomes quite darker. So I, I would like to have this one at uh, more of this cookie monster blue. Now, once you get your piece mixed up, you can start applying the color and I'm going to try to create an artificial stained glass that I'm going to use inside of our Tiffany light. Just random pieces like this. So what I'm going to do is I will now go and mix up a, a green and a yellow and red and I'll do the rest of this and show you what now although it looks very colorful right now with the Jackson Pollock dots and dashes kind of concept and I still need to add some more different color in between the spaces so it's all uniform in the stained glass style here but right now we need to let this dry because it's going to change color okay once you got your dragonflies dried on there turn it over now, as you can see it's still not exactly dry but that's okay I'm going to now use the same white glue and food coloring technique to paint the dragonflies in any way that I want them to. And then after they dry, we can cut them out. Okay, I just mixed up a green. Let's do the tail. Just a little dub. All we need is just a little color. Just a little color. Just a little color. Not much. I'll do this part too. I think that's pretty cool. You never know how these things are going to turn out until you let them dry and turn them over, anyways. Okay, that's one color. And I think I went to the, the wings in a different color. Okay, so today I decided to do the wings red. You gotta remember that when you're working with the stained glass material like this, it's going to come out either darker or lighter uh, than it is. This may dry like a kind of like a pink color. I'm not really sure, but um, it's fun to do this reverse painting. I just want colors that are going to stand out in our photo shoot, that's all. You 
as long as we have that stained glass look. Make sure you fill it in very carefully. Another very important tip, if you're working with glue on brushes, make sure you put them under hot water immediately after you're done with them so you can melt off the glue. This is what it came out like. Now, a lot of the yellow is not dried yet, but as you can see, by putting the white piece of paper behind this, it pops. So once we cut out this piece and put it inside of our lampshade that we had created, we put the pieces in here, we're gonna hot glue them inside. We're going to paint the interior white and make all those colors pop. Okay, once you get all your pieces chunked up, cut in pieces, you can now hot glue them up inside of your lampshade. Okay, so once you get all of that hot glue in there, wait till it dries, and you can actually see the colors through the exterior. Okay, now using a titanium white 901, we're going to paint the interior of this and make all those colors pop. It's now time for us to cut out our dragonflies. Okay, I'm using a titanium white 901 and a fine brush. I'm just going to very, very carefully paint the back of our dragonflies in. What this is going to do is it will enhance the color of our insect. And I'll show you what that's going to look like. Okay. We want to do all of them. Once you get all of your paint dry, you're going to start putting on your dragonflies. I want mine to be a little bit down so we can hot glue these on. Once you get all your pieces glued on there, it should look like this. Once you get your base done for your light, you can add some hot glue for decoration. And uh, like I said again, make sure you wear a mask when you're working with this type of foam. And now let's paint it a black. I'm using today a 999 Alpha. Very easily, once I got the, the main lamp part done, I had mixed up uh, a silver 995 and a black 999. And I just did a very soft overlayer coat just touching it to make sure the black showed through and to allow it to have the look of all the carving that we had done. So any part that was still left over that's green from the foam, I'll go back in there with a little bit of black and touch that up. I had worked on a base tonight. Basically, I had carved the base out of the foam just as I had done the top. And it's just freshly painted, so that's why it is all glossy at the moment. So we'll wait till that dries, and then I will continue with the silver and black finish. So we have been working feverishly on our Tiffany style light. You can see, you'll see there's some foam here. We got the foam up here. And what we want to do is, I had purchased these. This is floral wire. Now, working with floral foam is one thing, but working with floral wire is another. This is usually used for uh, corsages and other things, but I'm going to drive a piece of this wire straight through this piece until it comes out there. Oh, it came out a little bit low, but anyways. This is going to create a lot more support for our Tiffany light. I'm going to drive now this through here to get that in the center there. Getting that under, driving it straight through. I'm going to bend this wire over like this. And then we're going to hot glue all this in place. With our Tiffany light cover you can see I put these gemstone stickers on the dragonfly's eyes. It just adds a totally new depth to the lampshade. Uh, I kind of wish they were all the same color but I thought well since the the shade is multiple colors hey why not just make them multiple colors. So 
that adds peace. And then also, because you see my, my computer's revving up, uh, we have a top piece, which I'm going to show you here in a moment. Okay, so last night, this here is a bubble teacup cover. And I had cut off the top, liked the, the divots that were on here. Look at this. It fits perfectly in that size. It's the right depth for the top part. And then I just used this extra Fila orange clay that we had left over, built up what would look like the top of it from photographs. Now we just have to paint this the same color that we did the lampshade. So let's do that today. We're going to do this, plus we're going to build the bottom piece of our lamp. Remember again, mixing your silver. I'm using an, uh, what number is this? A 995 silver acrylic alpha plus a 660 black shield. I'm mixing them in. I'm bringing the black into the silver to get the exact color as the shade that we had made earlier because you don't want to have two different colors and then once you reach that right tone which is just about there now I can start the painting so I'm using just a flat brush here this is a number three here a flat brush and this little guy may need two coats because we're putting in plastic and it's not heating very well so this is going to look pretty good when it's finished. So let's finish this off and I'll show you what it looks like. I'm actually going to show you what this looks like before I put it under the dryer. Um, this came out so well. The other thing is that um, I added divots to the clay to make it look like it's more poured. And then if you want to know what the bottom is, it's, it's just pink foam that was built up to make that a little bit more, how do you say it, like a table before I put the clay on there. But right now, um, we're going to put this under the hair dryer, dry it off, and see what it looks like on top. Of that is not even glued down yet. And <laughs> look at that. That pretty impressed me. That's a top. All right. You can see the pain on my hands. That's what you got to do when you be a prop maker. Always got to get messy. But anyways, we're going to hot glue that down, and then we're going to put some more material on the the um, the stand of I'm always learning from my mistakes. Um, I actually drove a piece of wire, uh, floral foam wire, through this, and actually, and doing that, there is a piece missing. Uh, there is a piece that goes from here up. So I, I actually, I found the floral foam on the ground over here and realized, gee, there's a piece missing. So today I'm going to be creating the piece that goes in here to support that. So, hey, that's the part about being a prop maker. You, you live and you learn. So basically, for this, I'm going to finish off the painting on here. Just finish this off. I'm waiting for my hot glue gun to warm up if it's dripping. Hey, we are, we are on the go here. So I'm going to put the, the top on, and then I'm going to build this piece that's missing. I'm going to show you. Okay, this becomes another sculpting project. I want to show you. I made that out of an exact identical piece of foam like this. So basically I had my floral foam and I cut it to the round shape to create the, the right size. Now from the circular part here, I'm going to be building up a base and then it's got to fit this exact size. So you have to mark the top of your piece and measure out how big that is before you put that on there. And we're just going to sculpt it down. While I'm working, I want to also always tell everyone, please use a mask. I'm using a 3M here over the mouth because you're working with floral foam. There's micro dust that comes off of this. So I need a sharp instrument here. All I need to do is measure out the exact shape of Piece that I'm working on, and I can sculpt it down from there. So I'm going to cut this out, and I'm just going to show you what it looks like.
if you've never worked with floral foam before, it's better to take off less than more because you can't put it back on. Once you take that floral foam off, it's it's a done deal. So be very careful with knives. And you don't really particularly have to use this type of blade. You can actually use other blades. Um, basically, floral foam will just disintegrate just with the slightest touch. So, actually, if you're working with small children or something, you can actually just use a tool to just... See, I, I've dug that out so well. The shape already. Uh, yeah, you don't really need to dig it with a knife, but just to get a lot of it out very quickly. So I'm going to continue to do this, and then we're going to get the right size of the base so the two pieces can go on together. Once you get the floral foam, just chewed down to where you want it. All you need is a stiff brush and I'm going to show you I have a whole entire collection of different types of brushes that I use um, but in this case you can use a stiff brush like this and you can just clean that up really quickly or if you wanted to you can actually use like a fine one here I'm using a, a fan brush here to really get the detail in but you can see how fast this is going it's just taking me a few moments to create the uh, connector base. You can use sandpaper if you wanted to to smooth this down. Uh, there's so many different techniques, but using uh, floral foam and prop making is it's a lot of fun actually. But like I say, always wear a mask and uh, be careful with the knives. We're going to see if this is the right size of our, uh, our piece. Okay, so I brought in the base. Oh yeah, that fits on there nicely. Okay, now this is flat and this is rounded, so now I have to take this off and I've got to smooth this down. The problem is, there's a nice hard shell on there, so I can take the knife and I'm going to carve it down. All about making props. So let's uh, connect these. I very carefully cut around the paint and now I'm going to level out the, the dome that I created here. I want this nice and flat, as flat as I can get it. Yeah. As flat as I can get it. And if you take too much off, you're just going to use some uh, feel of clay and fill it in. But at the moment, that looks pretty good. Let's check out how level it is. Bingo. Nice. Before I go any further with this, I just want to show you what this looks like once it's been made. I mean, and having the power to to create something like this, I mean, you can just go crazy with this. This looks like a, a mini uh, tree stump, you know. I'm just using the, the soft fan to, like, take out the dust that's in there. But imagine what you can create with floral foam and paint. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can make a mushroom and... Whatever, but now, assembling the pieces, you can see how this is going to go together. So, there's the base of the light, and then, this piece is going to go on here. So we need to assemble all these now with some hot glue, and make them work. Okay, next part is, we are going to be hot gluing down. Main part. Don't be afraid to put some glue on there. I can't live without my glue gun as a soft prop maker. 
lining that up. Hold them there for a moment. Making sure that works. Yeah. Came out a lot better than I thought. Yeah, we're still going to drive the wire. We're still going to drive our wire straight through it, all the way through for extra support. And then, see about putting the uh, top part on. I feel like I got myself an Academy Award. <laughs> okay, top part, pushing the wire down. Bottom part, now, bending the wire over. I'm gonna hot glue these both in place. So we have a little bit extra support. I'm going to actually drive that straight up through there again. Okay, get out my glue gun. Glue that in place. I'm going to show you how to do this. It's kind of like a welding technique. Go across it and around. That should hold it very nicely. Same with the top. Uh, this case, I'm going to leave this open because I don't know if I'm going to be able to put the extension on there just yet. Okay, so now on the top of the light, I had found this. If you're wondering what this is, this is just a piece of tube. It came with the pencil case. Basically, you put the pencils in here. You got like six pencils. This is from my daughter's collection. I thought, you know what? That's a good standard piece. And I can hot glue that on there in the center. And that's going to be the appropriate height for the light. Don't be afraid to put it on. You can always cover it up. Okay, now we're going into the final stage to put our light shine up. Yeah, I still have my mask on. <laughs> this is working with foil foam. I had found this for 30 cents at a local supply store. It is a remnant left over from a piece that they didn't want. But look at how awesome of a pull, a pull chain. You got two, and one on this side. You can have one on that side if you wanted to. Two of them. We're just going to put them in in there. Um, right now, that's on there quite firmly by putting a lampshade on. This is a balancing act. i to find the center of gravity on this one. We're going to hot glue that guy on there. We have been rocking and rolling on that. If you're wondering what's in the background over there, that is a fortune telling machine that I had made. That is a huge prop. Uh, that I made. I'll show you that in a second here, but uh, there. That's going to be hot glued on there, and we're going to probably stabilize this with a little bit of a, a base. So let's hot glue the light shade onto our lamp. That came out really well, actually. It could have been a little bit taller if I wanted to actually show off more of the sculpting thing, but I feel like that is appropriate. That's an appropriate size for this light. So I'm going to attach probably the chains up inside a little bit of hot glue on them but before I do I want to actually add a ball on these and then paint it silver so let's use some feel of clay let's add some uh, balls to these and put them on okay. I just used some feel of clay and just created the, the balls ends here I gotta smooth them out and make them really perfect and then we need to let them dry for a full 24 hours before we can assemble them up inside here to make them look like they are the light switches. So I'm just going to leave them over here and we'll do them tomorrow. But this is looking really good.